Hi, this is Dr. Rudresh. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Medical Microbiology Guide. Please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. In this session, we will learn the basics of gram staining and the video demonstration of the procedure of gram staining. Gram staining was first described by Danish physician Hans Christian Gram in 1884. The principle of gram stain is Certain bacteria, due to their physiochemical properties, retain the primary stain and resist decolorization with absolute alcohol and appear purple. They are called as gram positive. Some get decolorized and take up the counter stain and appear pink. They are called as gram negative. Gram staining is an example for differential staining. Let's see the reagents used in the gram stain. There are four different chemicals which are used in four different steps of the gram staining. The first step is primary staining. We can use crystal violet, methyl violet or gentian violet as a primary stain. Mordant, most commonly grams iodine is used. We can also use lugalside in certain modifications of gram stain. The third step is decolorization. The most commonly used decolorizer is absolute alcohol followed by acetone, anilid xylol, iodine acetone, acetone and alcohol mixture. The counter stain used are saffronin, dilute carbyl fission, carbalum solution, neutral red and basic fission. Let's see the procedure of gram staining. I have already explained the smear preparation for gram stain as a separate video. In this video, I am going to explain the procedure of gram staining. Gram staining is having four steps and four reagents. The first step is primary staining. We use crystal violet, then modern gram sidin decolorizer and the counter stain we use here saffronin. For primary staining we will add crystal violet on the smear. Wait for one minute. Wash it with the tap water. Add grams iodine wait for one minute wash it with the tap water add two to three drops of decolorizer here i am using acetone acetone is the fastest decolorizer hence you should wash it very fast we have to stop decolorization when crystal violet stopped running out of the smear decolorization is the most important step in gram staining because if you under decolorize, the gram negative will look as gram positive. If you over decolorize, the gram positives will look as gram negative. So, the decolorization step is controlled by tilting the slide gently and just add the decolorizer drop by drop and watch the crystal violet running out of the slide. When the crystal violet running stops, immediately hold the slide and the running water and stop the decolorization. Add the counter stain. Wait for 30 seconds. Wash with the tap water and now the gram staining procedure is over. Let's see what will be the colors of gram positive and gram negative bacteria at each step of the gram staining. In a freshly prepared smear, both gram positive and gram negative bacteria will be colorless. In the first step of gram staining, when we add crystal violet, both the gram positive and gram negative will take up the purple color. When we add the mordant, the crystal violet will be fixed to the cell wall of the both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. 
In the step of decolorization, gram-positive bacteria retains the primary color and still it appears purple color. Whereas gram-negative bacteria lose all the primary dye and it appears colorless. When we do counter staining, the bluish purple color of gram positive bacteria will remain same whereas the gram negative bacteria which was colorless will take the pink color. This is a gram strain smear showing gram positive cocci in single pairs and clusters and gram negative bacilli arranged singly. Various theories have been proposed for gram staining. So they have been basically categorized into physical theories and chemical theories. Physical theory, these are based on the various physical laws such as absorption, adsorption, capillarity, surface tension, isoelectricity, etc. Chemical theories, they are based on the chemical composition of the either cytoplasm, cell wall, or the cytoplasmic content. Protoplasmic theory suggests gram positive organisms have more acidic protoplasm compared to gram negative bacteria and hence they have more affinity towards the basic dye like crystal violet. Whereas magnesium ribonucleate theory says the magnesium ribonucleate protein complex is found abundantly in gram positive organisms. When the diiodine complex forms a covalent bond with this magnesium ribonucleate proteins, they impart gram positivity to these cells. The gram positive cell wall is having thick layers of the peptoglycan. These peptoglycan layers, they create pore in the gram positive cell wall. The diiodine complex will enter this pore and in the process of decolorization, the pore size will shrink thereby locking the diiodine complex within the cell wall. In gram negative bacteria, in the process of decolorization, the lipid bilayer will dissolve and increases the pore size thereby leaking the diiodine complex. Let's see the animation of the cell wall theory. We know the gram positive cell wall is made up of thick layer of peptoglycan which is interlinked by the tichoic acid. Whereas gram negative bacteria is having a very thin layer of peptoglycan and an outer lipid bilayer. When we put the primary stain, the diiodine complex will go and fix both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. In the step of decolorization, the pore size of gram positive peptoglycan cell wall will decrease thereby locking the diiodine complex. In gram negative bacteria, the lipid bilayer will get dissolved thereby leaking the diiodine complex and making the cell colorless. Here I am mentioning briefly about modifications. In the discussion for undergraduates, they will ask to name the various modifications and its uses. So, I am mentioning here few modifications and uses like Kopilov and Biermann's modification preferred stain for tissue sections and herbs. Jensen's modification preferred for gonococci and meningococci. Wiegert's modification again used for tissue sections. Hacker's modification is the most commonly used staining method in various laboratories. Conditions in which the gram positive appears gram negative are old cultures or repeated subcultures, excessive heating while fixation, excessive decolorization, patient on antibiotic therapy which has disrupted the cell wall like beta lactam antibiotics. The structures that appear gram positive are gram positive bacteria, fibrin, yeast cells, and hyphae. The structures that appear gram-negative are gram-negative organisms, nuclei and protoplasm of the pus cells and tissue cells. Applications of gram stain are to detect the quality of the specimens, 
to select the appropriate culture media for the given specimen. To detect the appropriate antibiotic for early presumptive treatment. For rapid detection of meningococci. And to identify the presence of inflammatory reaction in the given specimen. Medical emergencies that can be diagnosed by gram strain are meningococcal meningitis, meningitis due to hemophilus influenza, gas gangrene, coronavirus diphtheria infection, and the gonorrhea. Usually, in viva voice, they will ask you, nay, give some examples of gram positive and gram negative organisms. So, always when you are telling, you tell gram positive organisms under cocci and bacilli. Again, under cocci and bacilli, divide them into aerobic and anaerobic. Now, I am giving few examples of the gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli, and gram negative bacilli. Gram positive cocci, aerobic is Staphylococcus or yes. Anaerobic gram positive cocci is Peptostreptococcus species. Gram negative cocci, aerobic is Moraxella, Gonococci, Meningococci. Anaerobic is Villanella species. Gram positive bacilli, aerobic is Bacillus species. Anaerobic is Clostridium species. Gram negative bacilli, aerobic is E. coli or Vibrio. Anaerobic are Bacteroides fragilis and other anaerobic gram negative bacilli. Certain safety consideration with respect to gram stain. Be careful with the flame as the volatile and flammable liquids are used in some of the reagents. Do not use the gram stain near an open flame. Generally, the gram staining is given along with the Zeden staining. So, students tend to use the spirit lamp to heat the Zeden stain smears. Hence, you must be careful while handling the reagents of gram staining when there is an open flame. After the use, discard the slides in the container with disinfectant. And Gram's crystal violet, saffron and iodine can cause irritation to the eyes, respiratory system and skin. So you must be careful. Always keep the container tightly closed. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos.